All right. Today, I am continuing experimenting with the Kakamori Brass Dip Pen Nib from St. Louis Art Supply. Um, so far, I've tried the Platinum Carbon Ink. Works fantastic. I learned very quickly that I do have to clean the nib very frequently throughout its use. I tried watercolor and then gouache, and I was having some flow mark making issues. So it's either the water quantity, um, maybe something caught in the, the parts, um, still have to figure that out. And so far leaning towards just using it as the second half of a painting. Now I'm gonna try it with the speedball ink. So this is kind of, if we were to do an initial inking or uh, an inking at the end of a painting or as a tool by itself. This is super cheap ink. This is so much, I believe I got it for $16. That being said, whenever you open it, um, just be careful because it's gonna splatter. It's probably best to put something on top whenever you open it because sometimes you'll get ink everywhere. I'm busting out the, I guess it's just like a vintage um, inkwell. Wiping off the ink around it because in future openings, if I need to, I want to prevent it from splattering. So just be very, very careful with this bottle ink because it's just um, goes everywhere, opening and closing. This well I had picked up at a, a flea market. I have a uh, guy that watches for fountain pens and stuff for me. It does seem to pull the ink up into the, like I guess through like a capillary action, into the breast of it. Fortunately, this inkwell is chipped, but I think it's hard to find them with the um, ceramic in them, since that's most likely what the part to break. All right, so this is our India ink. See that we get the really consistent line flows. Dang, I should have did rows of five or the four and the slash through it so we can count easily how many this will hold. This is definitely flourishing with this ink. All right, we're starting to see a decline in it. I rolled the ink in my hand, uh, the pen in my hand. You can see that this is all one dip. Turning on its side to get more of a thicker line width. This is insane. If I was good at video editing, I would do some sort of time lapse at this point, just starting to just flow through all of this. Holy cow. And I had mentioned in the first video, holy cow, wow. That once you start to fade a little bit, you can use that for uh, distant markings. If you're looking for just a sense of depth or a little tonal variety. There we go. So that was all one dip. That's insane. Um, I do want to mention that I might have seen people saying maybe they've used the liquid watercolor to, um, to drop ink into it or to dip it into a uh, watercolor. Some places will sell um, liquid forms of it. I think that I had given all of mine away to another local artist. Sometimes, you know, you're experimenting with different materials and then you pass them on to somebody else to see if it suits them. Or, you know, I give away some of my um, art materials as gifts to teachers who are um, maybe running a contest in their class, like a poetry type thing, or read aloud. And, um, so a lot of materials that I've used in the past on here, you know, make their way into the hands of kids in the classroom, you know, because I'm a school teacher. All right. I kind of want to now see how far we can take with just drawing. 
Uh, what do I want to draw? In the previous one we did an experiment with kind of like a Japanese cherry blossom. And the reason we did Japanese and not Chinese cherry blossom was because this nib is made in Japan. The St. Louis Art Supply website uh, prides itself on carrying new and interesting tools and art supplies that maybe other websites aren't carrying. I don't think anybody else has this nib in the United States. I, I might have seen it listed, but I think it was sold out from other places. So they might be, I don't know, who knows the sole provider of it at this point. This is all one dip for a sketch. Holy cow. It does remind me of a, the quantities that a glass dip pen will be able to carry. But here we get line variation. I'm thinking you almost have to embrace the charm and the randomness of it. If there's an artist out there that uses this, if you guys know of one, let me know. I'm curious um, how detailed or um, how much control they have over it. I am thinking for nib sanitation and to prevent drying within it, to do a wipe off in water between each inking. And I do think that I would um, take it out of the holder and do a cleaning after a session, mainly because of, um, first of all, how expensive it is. And when I say expensive, it's, it's 45, which is pretty pricey for a, a nib. However, I don't see any way that the nib can fail unless you drop it and break it. Unlike almost every other dip pen that will either lose its um, elasticity over time, potentially, or, um, I don't know, maybe they just start to lose their point from the use. And also the fact that most dip pen nibs won't work that well on um, watercolor paper, or in this case, mixed media paper, stuff that has a tooth to it, at least for me. I don't have a light enough hand where I'm just going to get it to to catch on everything. So, so far this page is just three dippings. It gives you an idea of how far this thing can really go. Let's see. Since I still have ink out and I don't want to waste ink. Let's do a full size and we'll see how many times I utilize it, uh, redip it. I've been playing around with um, pelicans lately. Not so much drawing, but just doing the um, dry point, etching it into plastic, and then from there, rubbing ink into the etches. And then from there, running it through a little spaghetti machine that I picked up, a Cheapo Depot one, in order to transfer the image onto paper. Okay. My grandpa, who's uh, deceased, would always have like these little songs and dances that he would do. And he had one that was I don't know if he made it up or if I should look it up, but a wonderful bird is a pelican. He can hold more in his beak than his belly can. He can hold enough for a week inside his beak, and I wonder how the hell he can. So, 
Where he got that from, I have no idea. So that's one dipping for this sketch. Give it a big old wing. There seems to be a darker portion on Pelican's necks that rides there. It might just be a close proximity to um, the beak and the pouch. You get that wild hair. And they have these wild eyes. A lot of people do pen and ink or pen and wash with watercolor. So they'll do their initial drawing. Um, and then from there, they'll go over it with watercolor. So that's two. Just rinsing it with water. And that can actually pulls it all the way up. Anyway, yeah, a lot of people will do an initial uh, inking. It's very um, popular technique. And then watercolor over it. Um, but if you're using rough watercolor paper, you're going to pull up and um, you'll get pieces of paper stuck within your... Um, nib. With this fella, I don't think that'll be the case. I think artists will also traditionally use uh, sharpened sticks to apply ink down. I believe Edward Wesson would do that. Um, I know for a while Lois Davidson was playing around with that as well. Um, okay, so that was what, number three? So you can see that just quick sketching, it, it holds a lot of ink. We can do a lot with it. We even have more there. So, yeah, um, with ink, a hundred percent. I think that this is a great tool. Watercolor, jury is still out. But I didn't have to water down my ink or do anything else. This is number four. We'll just put. Look at that quantity. I mean, you could just really either have it dump it out, or change the angle of your line. Guys, you're going to find every piece of paper in this house and scrape it throughout every video, aren't you? I should have given him a longer beak. But at this point, I think you get the point of um, how this is. Uh, I think I had said I would personally make sure that I clean it every time that I use it because um, it's uh, almost a $50 nib but for the price it's unique and I don't ever see any um, besides like damage due to dropping it or something like that anything that would uh, limit its life so very interesting piece. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, let me know what you'd like me to experiment with, with it. And, um, I'll be back for more. So thank you all so much. And thank you to all the, um, Ko-Fi and the Patreon supporters. Uh, you know, I take my own money and I take money that's donated, um, to buy supplies and to do these videos. So thank you all so much for your support. On that note, y'all take care. I'll talk to you soon.